Hello and welcome to Krabby's Changing Room Chat. The, the, the more astute uh, of our regular viewers will realise that um, that isn't Chris Patterson. Chris Patterson's not going to be with us for the, for the next few weeks. So we've gone to the very, very top uh, of Scottish rugby and we've replaced him with the one and only John Manson. For any of our podcast listeners, you'll know John is out in Washington working for Old Glory at the moment. John, how are you? I'm very well, Al. Thank you uh, for the invite. And uh, if anybody wants a refund, you can uh, contact Scottish Rugby on their <laughs> on their email address. And uh, yeah, Simple. listen, it's uh, great to get a shout here. It's um, first time in my life I've ever replaced Chris Patterson, so it's a big day for me. 110 caps between you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he, he had 109 and a half yes, from one legend to another we are joined ahead of Friday Night's Fixture which is a 1984 game against France by the one and only John Rutherford Brad, how are you? All good F- feel a bit outnumbered here Al two, two uh, front five boys I've done my research this morning I, I need to jump in here so when you said Rudd was coming on, I was a bit, I thought, I'm out of my depth here. So I phoned our head coach as a standoff at Old Glory, Andrew Douglas. So he, I said, I'm going to be speaking to John Rudd this afternoon. And his quote, and I'll quote him, Scotland's best 10, more flair than Townsend, and more consistent than Russell. And I thought, well, that's a, that's a pretty good introduction. And I think that'll maybe give some of the younger viewers a bit of, a, a bit of an insight into sort of the, the player that Rudd was. Looking at, looking at 19, 19, 1984 in particular, Rudd, I don't know how your memory of games is uh, Chris Patterson. Mossy's memory of every game he's ever played on is, is unbelievable. But give us, give us your insight into to that 1984 game against France. Well, it, it was a very important game, Al. Um, there was a lot of pressure on the team because we hadn't won the slam since tw- 19, 1925. And my, 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 we, we had played well against the other three teams, uh, but the French were a uh, different opposition altogether. They were better, they were more physical. Uh, and to be fair to Jim Telfer, you know, J- Jim was a great coach, of course, but he, uh, he knew this would be a much tougher game than, than the other three. And they're world class players. Uh, I mean, Blanco, Seller. Galleon, Reeves, Ronell, you could, you could go right through their team. Uh, but of course, we had home advantage and we had a fantastic support that day. But my, my memory of it is they put us under real pressure the first half. And we were, we were struggling to stay with them. But what, what that Scottish team was, we, we could hang, hang on in there. And I know for myself, I, you know, I didn't have a particularly good first half. And uh, the, the, there was a lot of pressure on us, but I think this, that was a secret to winning a Grand Slam. You know, you just, you never gave up. Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was there. I was in, for both that and the, the 1990 game, I was, uh, I was 16 at that game and then I was a bit older at the 1990 game too. The, the thing I remember is, is the crowd on that day. I mean, that, especially that last 10, 15 minutes when we were putting a bit of pressure on. It was just yeah. insane. It was absolutely insane because the yes. game was packed in. There was a lot of standing those days. That, that, it, was, that's, uh-huh. it was crazy. Can you? Yeah. Have you got memories of how loud the crowd was, and how does that compare to nowadays? Well, um, I, th- I think that the, uh, the well, when it's a slam game, the the, the crowd are really urg- mm. urging you on. I mean, they were as desperate as the players to. Uh, to win that game, so yes, I do remember it, and uh, I remember at the end as well. The, these were the days where the supporters were allowed to run on, run on the pitch, and it was fantastic sharing the victory with them as well. I mean, it must have taken yeah. us ten, fifteen minutes to get back to the changing rooms. I tell you, we had JJ on um, for the 1990 game oh, a few weeks ago, Rod, and he was talking about the Wednesday night working sessions. The uh, dreamy used to have them doing it. He highlighted right. John Beatty. Says John Beatty was a guy you didn't want to get in the wrong side. David Soul was another one. He, you didn't want to get in the wrong side of him. You, you guys in the back line, you wouldn't have been involved in those games. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I like watching it though. I Nowhere haven't. near it. Nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. The 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 the, the, the toughest thing for the backs for the forwards was, uh, uh, of course, 
as I said earlier, it was we're all amateur these days. And after sessions at Murrayfield, it was like a race to get back to the tell because the, the staff at the tell always had cakes and scones and cups of tea out, right? And if you if you, if you didn't get there before the forwards, you were absolutely stuffed. Hey, nothing, nothing's changed, Rod. Nothing's right? changed. Nothing's changed. No. We, we hadn't heard of a dietitian in uh, no. 1984. Well, I'm a bit, a bit after the game, Rod. I mean, we don't want to get into too much detail about the game because the guys and girls are going to watch it, hopefully. Uh-huh. Um, what, about, what about after the game in the old stand? And Can you remember much about post-match? It was always beers in the dressing room. That, the bubbly came, came, came out that day. But we used to have these fantastic banquets uh, after, after a game. I don't, I don't think you have it now, uh, where at the North, North British and uh, all the teams and the officials and uh, the wives would attend. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a huge night. But personally, I, I, I remember being pretty knackered. You know, it was, mm. it was quite a build-up to the game and then you got through the game and you won it. And after a few beers, you were just a bit done in. That, that's why yeah. the, the Monday after the game, it was a really great party with the, the players. Because the uh, there was a sort of realization that we'd done it after after so long. Yeah. How that, Rod? Are you are you a good spectator? Do you like getting along to the games, or were you sit and watch it in your living room? No, uh, I, I would uh, be, at, be at most of the home games, and uh, I love going t- to the Italy game. I absolutely love it, but that tends to be a couples weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sort of very controlled. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of uh, ni- nice uh, meals and eating out. Yeah, actually, you so, come back for that. You come back for that trip, and you remember it. Yes, uh, yeah. no, I, 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 I love watching the team. You know, I, I, I think the first year, as you guys know, when when you retire from rugby, it's a bit tough because you're watching the games, thinking I should be out there, and, mm-hmm. but. A couple of seasons after that, you realise you're so unfit that it's a, a, it'd be a joke if you went on. But no, I've always been a supporter, and I love I love to see the boys win. And uh, I th- this year, you know, see, seeing the boys play so well in in uh, Ireland and then beating France at home, and we we really could have beaten England. It uh, it was good. Mm. It was a good season for Scotland. Mm. And I think this team and I think Gregor's an outstanding coach. Uh, with a bit of luck, they, they could do something special as well. I agree with that. Rudy, Rudy, it's genuinely been an absolute pleasure to get you on. One thing from from my point of view, uh, the 1984 game and the 1990 game, my heroes are playing in that game. I generally cannot wait to watch it. Uh, to get a deeper understanding of some Same of the here. characters that you're talking about there will be it's been phenomenal and I look forward to, to watching it. I would encourage everyone who has never um, seen the game, they have to watch it. It's a very different game because you don't get the phases like uh, you you get nowadays, you know, if you get up to if you mm-hmm. got up to two or three phases. But what they've got to remember is we're all amateurs and mm-hmm. uh, we probably weren't as organized as modern teams, but when they see the commitment, uh, and I think the pride uh-huh. Pride exactly. of wearing the national jersey, it, it all comes out. And to be to be a team like France to win the Grand Slam, it was very special. That, that's a bit Rod. That should never change. It's the commitment, the passion, the pride to pull on that jersey that goes through every single generation and, and joins us all up. <laughs> Boys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm surprised I remembered so much about it, but there you go. <laughs> brilliant. Thanks, Rod. It was brilliant. Nice to see you.